Hello, my wonderful spirit guides. Today I'm going to be reacting to 100 Gex, 10,000 Gex. I am super excited for this because I have heard one song and that is Hollywood Baby. I did it in a song request video for Patreon, which I haven't actually finished yet. So hopefully I get that video out before on Patreon before I get this one out. It could be the other way around. I don't know. Of course, I'm going to still listen to the song though and completely just vibe with it and talk about it. Um, but I won't talk about it as much. I might be able to get the clip from the request video and show you my first reaction. I'll post that on YouTube at some point. But um, anyway, other than that, I don't know what any of the other songs sound like. Um, so I'm super excited. And after hearing that song, it's got me even more excited. So. I am ready. If you would like to become a patron, then the links for that will be in the description below. There are different tiers to choose from and it just helps me out so much. And of course, you get stuff like uncut content, early access content, and just exclusive content too. So it's a give and take situation. Follow me on Instagram, I shall follow you back. Like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the video, of course. And I also have a Discord so you can talk to like-minded people. Also, I have a PayPal, so if you just want to send me a tip through PayPal, that'd be amazing. Thank you to everyone and anyone who has. So yes, very, very, very grateful. But anyway, let's get into it. I'm so excited. And like when I did a thousand gex, that was one of my favorite reaction videos. It was short but it was really fun. And this one, again, is a short little album, but so much fun to be had. So I'm really excited. I think I've already said that already, that I'm excited, but yeah, whatever, let's just get into it. Oh my God, my hair looks crazy with the headphones. <laughs> but not much can be done about that. I don't mind if I look like some sort of dog with long curly ears. <laughs> right, oh yeah, I need to shade of makeup because I have done something a little bit. <laughs> crazy today um don't ask please don't because i really can't tell you what i was thinking when i did this there was no um you know objective i just did something i kind of feel like it looks like fish tails um in a weird ass way other than that i really don't know what i was thinking so, so yeah that's that i do kind of like it though i feel it's kind of interesting but anyway let's go for it first song dumbest girl alive oh like a movie oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yes those drums if you think i'm stupid now you should see me when i'm high and i'm smarter than i look i'm the dumbest girl alive the vocals just so electronic Ooh. Ooh. dare i say that's quite beautiful can you show me Hollywood Baby, I, it really is kind of thematic with that song so far as well. So that's cool. But yeah, I love that kind of pop punk, but actually kind of metal with the riff, actually. Do, 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 do. Yeah, actually, a lot so. A lot so. But wow, that's cool. And the lyrics, quite lyrically charged, actually. If you think I'm stupid now, you should see me when I'm high. And I'm smarter than I look. I'm the dumbest girl alive. I took 10 Advils today, I've got bruises on my thighs, plus I gave away my brain, I'm the dumbest girl alive. I've got lightning in my veins, walk around like Frankenstein, I did science on my face, I'm the dumbest girl alive. I wonder what this is all kind of like meaning actually, because it's hard to tell just from the lyrics, I feel like there's more to it, you know what I mean? Um, apparently that I did science on my face is, uh, uh, when I clicked it, it says uh, facial feminization surgery, um, 
yeah, makes sense. But yeah, there's obviously not going to be a lot of stuff about the lyrics yet because it's so new. Um, never ask me what I think. Don't know why you even try because I'll always get it wrong. I'm the dumbest girl alive. It's just not like, like self-deprecating, like I'm so dumb. But at the same time, there's like, it's got like two sides to it. Like it's not, it doesn't seem that dumb because she even says I'm smarter than I look. You know what I mean? Money coming from my mouth, money com coming from my eyes, and I keep on losing count on the dumbest girl alive. But that sounds like that, you know, just those lines in general give me like the feeling of like her being like elite. Do you know what I mean? Just like an eliteness to it. Um, like, I'm so dumb and rich. <laughs> I don't know, it just gives me that like sort of imagery there. I am picking up the pace, I'm so happy I could die. Put emojis on my grave, I'm the dumbest girl alive. And maybe dumbest, maybe like dumbest could be like dumb dumb in love you know what i mean or like dumb like happy dumb happy because like you know if you're very intelligent then there's more room for pain <laughs> i can't explain it but like with intelligence like comes a lot of like depression and so on and, and being dumb yeah of course i'm not dumb it's, it's hard using that word because dumb is a cruel word but like Maybe it does mean just something a bit lighter, like, I'm so dumb that I can't even feel pain. I don't know, something like that. I never really thought I was smart enough to get depressed, but here I am. And I feel so dangerous when you say I'm doing fine now. Guess that's how it goes. I'm the dumbest girl alive. Text, 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 text. Like you're trying to start a fight. Yeah, I'll effing text you back. I'm the dumbest girl alive. So yeah, that talks about really about someone maybe she's saying she's dumb like oh yeah it makes sense like i'm a dumbest girl alive texting you back why do i keep texting you back because that that makes the most sense out of all the lyrics like you do feel dumb when you're texting back someone who is toxic and you know you shouldn't be texting them back so maybe in some way it all just alludes to that moment i don't know it's it's i guess it's up for interpretation and then it says on the outro why you want to pout is there something in your eye? Can you show me how? Can you show me how to cry? Yeah, so just being like, oh, why are you on a pal? Is there something in your eye? Like, you can't be crying, can you? And then, can you show me how? Can you show me how to cry? Being like, I need to be taught how to show my emotion. Uh, uh, something I'm not actually used to doing. Interesting. Oh. So cool. All right, anyway, next one is 757. Oh. <laughs> oh, the drum coming in like that. Changes it. Oh my god, the like auto tune is going crazy. I don't know, it's just the way it's done is so intricate. Okay, change up. This is chaos. It's like a um, video game. I knew that was gonna come in hard. <laughs> that hits so hard. Nice, and it's really side chaining the vocal there. Even though the vocals are quite like rhythmic anyway, when that big like kind of kick like sound came in, you could feel the vocal sucking in a little bit, where it almost mutes just because of how tough it is. That's cool. Okay, that one was interesting. I, I, again, another one where it's quite a lot of lyrics, and I'm like, what's going on? Right, 7.57, yeah, I'll never go to heaven. I've been smoking since 11, told the le devil he's a lemon. It feels really childish, do you know what I mean? Like, teenagers, like, 7.57, yeah, I'll never go to heaven. I've been smoking since 11, told the devil he's a lemon. Like, it feels like a weird, like, high school chant or something. And I guess he's saying 7.57 is the time he's talking about. Um, I'll never go to heaven, been smoking since 11. That's like also an interesting thing. I wonder if it's true. It's like a random personal detail there, like been smoking since 11. 
and then told the devil he's a lemon. Um, I guess like smoking as well, like smoking the devil's lettuce. As I always say, <laughs> it's like he's smoking it and he, and he meets the devil and he's like, you're a lemon. <laughs> To put it quite literally, he's just like, you're a lemon. Like, it has this kind of funniness to it. There's, like, innocence and this silliness. But it's also cool by being, like, it's also showing that he's not afraid of the devil. He's like, you're a lemon. Like, what the hell? You know, why are you so sour? I got problems with my spending, all these horses in my engine, doing 80 in a 30, but I'm never in a hurry. Interesting, so I've got problems with my spending, so spending lots of money, and I feel like that they've done this before. Feel so clean like a money machine. You know, about spending money, about smoking. It's very much fitting the themes of, the, you know, a thousand gecks. But anyway, all these horses in my engine. Oh, yeah, it's like, um, there's a horse. Wait, what, what's that song? Stupid horse, you, horse, you can get out the bush. Spend my money in my bank account, yeah. Oh, I love that one. But anyway, I've forgotten the lyrics because I, whenever I'm on the spot doing a video, I literally forget things like lyrics of things I previously reacted to or names of songs. I don't know why it happens, it just does. And then as soon as I relax, I like remember them. But when I feel on the spot, I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, I get like this like fear. But anyway, um, which is cool. So all the these horses in my engine, but also it's a play on words because it's obviously referencing Stupid Horse, the song, but also horsepower. So like horsepower giving like, uh, horsepower mean like how much, well, yeah, power does the engine have. Um, doing 80 in a 30, so doing obviously 80 miles per hour in a 30 miles per hour zone, but I'm never in a hurry. So like just doing these things, but not because they're in a hurry, but just because they want to, for fun, for for, for the thrill. Screaming laddy daddy daddy, all I wanna do is party. <laughs> I reference to one of the most referenced songs, Slick Rick Laddy Daddy. Okay, cool. Um drinking bottles of Moscato, taking pictures with a model, staying up till the morning, wish I that I was more discerning, going wild like coyote, where's the water? something's burning yeah <laughs> interesting so just being like living life to the max uh, indulging in all the pleasures and the sins and kind of being like oh wish that this was i was more discerning like wish i was a bit more like strict i think that's what like discerning kind of means like concerned or maybe a bit more uh Oh, let me look it up, because I always do this, discerning. So yeah, basically saying I wish I was a bit more tasteful and refined and whatever. Going wild like Coyote. Oh yeah, 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 this is a reference to Wiley Coyote from the Looney Tunes cartoon, Wiley Coyote and Roadrunner. Yeah, okay, cool, 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 I love that. I like the uh, cartoon reference there from early childhood. But um, very cool. And where's the water something's burning? Yeah, that's interesting, because that could be like, I could be anything. I could be like, you're absolutely just so whacked out your mind that there's something burning in the corner of your house and you need to put the water on it. But then my immediate thought was like, you've done like so much substances that you're dehydrated and then when you're peeing, it burns. That I know that's like so weird that that's where my mind went, but my mind often goes to weird places. But it could be that too. And then it goes back to the 757 that Dylan Brady does. And then it says, Blow out the blunt smoke sound of the shotgun. Shotgunning refers to the act of blowing smoke into another person's mouth for them to inhale. Nice, good. I wanted smoke, so I went out and got some. I love that, like, I wanted smoke, so I went out and got some. <laughs> I know, it's just matter of fact, I don't know. Live in dog years and I feel 26. Yeah, I'm an old bitch, but I learn new tricks. I love that. I love that. Live in dog years too, that's cool. If you're living in dog years, I don't know how old she is, but like, um, she says she feels 26, so I actually don't know how old she is, but she says she's old, but she knows how to learn new tricks, and, and it's cool, it's just like bigging herself up, like, yeah, maybe old, but I can learn new tricks all the time, like, mm -hmm. Better learn quick or end up like green bricks. You say you smoke real trees, they look like real sticks. We don't smoke trees, we smoke tree sliced. <laughs> you fill in the blank. That's so funny. Like, we don't do that. We smoke that. 
<laughs> just, it's just a funny set of lyrics there. Yeah, and then I smell the trees when I'm in Colorado. Interior gas station McDonald's. I left my cell phone dead at the house. I see the stars when the sun goes down. Somebody's making money off my problems. The way that you're talking, you'd better wear a condom. Oh, okay, that's interesting. You better wear a condom. Like You, you better be safe. You better watch your mouth because, you know, you could end up in trouble. Um, which is cool. I smell cowards and sons of a bitch. Everything quick all smells like... <laughs> <laughs> that smells like shit. I smell the trees when I'm in Colorado, interior gas station, McDonald's. I left my phone till okay, yeah. Interesting. So it's always like a bit there where it's like, keep my name up your mouth, you know, you're a coward. And and all these things about that. But I don't obviously I don't know what it's referring to. Um the outro of the song is different on the version released on the 10,000 Gex vinyl. Hmm. Apparently on the vinyl it says, now we're heading down the road on the interstate. I look out the window and I feel okay. I can feel the air when it hits my face. I just love the feeling. I just love the feeling. Now we're heading down the road on the interstate. Yeah, okay. Um, I can feel the changes and it's something I'm embracing. Taking time out just to waste it instead of always effing pacing. I'm oiling the hinges but I'm learning all my limits. I don't get bent out of shape because it's all okay. Oh, that feels really different to the one that we just heard, doesn't it? It feels like a lot more personal, inward kind of thought thing going on there rather than like a, oh, you better stop talking, you better do this. It's more of like a, I'm feeling great. You know, I don't get bent out of shape because it's all okay. I feel the changes and it's something I'm embracing. It's all kind of like positive stuff there. That's, that's weird that they did it differently for that, but I guess it makes it quite fun. It means that people might want to buy the vinyl as well and whatever. I don't know. I think it's a cool idea. <sighs> okay, right. Anyway, next song, which is Hollywood Baby. I have reacted to it, which and I'll try and uh, upload that at some point, um, but I haven't even put it on Patreon yet, so yeah. But from it's really confusing because when I talk to you guys, obviously I'm talking to you in real time here, but when I post a video, it could be like a few days later and it nothing makes sense anymore. <laughs> But anyway, let's do a Hollywood baby. I love this one. We just read I love this bit. I'm going crazy. Oh, it's so fun. I showed this to my boyfriend and he loved it too. It's hard not to. Very pop punk. I love that. What you cry about, cry about, cry about now. I'm going crazy. Oh, so fun. You'll never make it in Hollywood, baby. You'll never make it in Hollywood, baby. You'll never make it in Hollywood, baby. I love how it all like flows in the last bit. Like it's not like a rhythmic guitar anymore. It's more of like a legato. Ah oh, so fun. So fun. So fun. <laughs> It's just so powerful. It like literally brings me life. It brings me happiness. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm just so grateful for that song. I don't know how to explain it. it. Just it literally makes me so happy. And that's a rare thing for me at the moment, happiness. So yeah, I like to indulge in it while I can. Ah! But anyway, yeah, I won't say too much about the song because I've obviously said more about the song in my other reaction, but it's like you get a double reaction in a weird way. Even though I have already heard it, it still feels like the first time every time. But anyway, next song is called Frog on the Floor. Oh my gosh, honestly, the amount of times I've had frogs on my floor. I know, okay, <laughs> hang on, that sounds crazy because it is crazy, but like when my cats used to be allowed outside, like I only have one cat now and he's not allowed outside anymore because of the other cat dying when it went outside. It didn't die just because it went outside. <laughs> let's not. <laughs> let's not. And let's not make a mockery of something that was very traumatic for me. Sometimes it's easier to laugh, right? They used to bring in frogs all the time and 
I'm telling you, trying to catch a frog is quite difficult. And I did not realise they made such shrill sounds. Oh, it's just awful. I, my cat would, my, my both my cats, they would do a specific sound, like a specific meow that, and I always went, pause the TV and go, the cats have brought something in again. They brought us a gift. I know the meow. I know what it means. They're saying, come look at this. Because obviously you're a terrible hunter. So I had to go do it for you. Um, and then they bring in a live frog. And it sounds like this. But like even more shrill. I might even pitch shift that. If I did, then yeah. Sorry, I'm super ADHD right now. You make a horrible sound. But anyway, and then I went, <laughs> the first, one of the first times I went to pick it up, it did this big leap and it, it was kind of beautiful. I, I was actually quite astounded by the fact that like, they leap in like what feels like slow motion. I don't know how to explain it, but like the long legs outstretched. I mean, you've probably seen a job, a job, job drunk, a frog. <laughs> You've probably seen a frog jump before, but like, honestly, quite elegant, but it freaked me out. I was like, oh! <laughs> but anyway, I caught it put outside uh, in a box. I didn't touch it because you should not touch frogs, by the way. It's not good for them. So, um, yeah, I have had to do that a few times and no longer do I have to do that, which is nice. But it is kind of cool to see the frogs. One time they, they caught a mouse and just to make sure it was okay, I put it in a um, one of my daughter's like, pretend hamster cage things and um it even had like a wheel and everything and I put like fabric cut up fabric and put it in there and gave it cornflakes and a bowl of water and actually it ran in the wheel I only kept it one night just to make sure it was gonna live basically because I was so sad I always get sad about it and it, it, it was fully fine because I woke up and it was running in the wheel it was washing itself in the water and eating the cornflakes I was like oh my god you could so easy just get like a random mouse and have it as a pet but the only thing is you couldn't really like hold it with your hands and stuff because it might have like diseases or whatever but anyway sorry going on a tangent just because I've read the title frog on the floor right anyway let's go oh it's got like a scar feeling like punk scar two-tone a little oh my god it's like a kid song Syncopation. Oh my gosh. I'll say something in a minute. I wonder if this is a true story. Not all of it. Okay, half time. So when he's jumping all around, will you buy my friend a bear? If you see him jumping around and he needs to wash him down. This bit is so cool. Okay, that one was really fun. And I, I need to say this now before I forget, but I actually mentioned this in my first reaction to Hollywood Baby, right? I said it reminds me of a band called The Presidents of the United States of America. And their album, is it self-titled album? See, I even forget their names of bloody albums and stuff that I've listened to on repeat, literally all of last year. Yeah, it is self-titled, it is self-titled. And anyway, you need to listen to that album. You need to. If you like this, I know it's going to be, it is different, but like the context of that song was so freaking similar to the con, like the contents and context, context, I say. No, the contents of the songs from the Presidents of the United States of America songs. They've literally got a song called June Buggy and it's literally about like spiders and like beetles or like riding in like a June buggy. And, and they literally sing songs about like uh, insects of different kinds and their like little lives and their personalities. He's even got one called Kitty, uh, which is about a cat, of course. And, and then that, towards the end of the album, not the end actually, 
but um, middle of the album, he's got a song called Back Porch, and he's like literally jamming with all these different like creatures that he's talked about. Oh my god, please listen to it. I know it sounds already silly, but like. Well, isn't this like 10,000 Gex album already quite silly? Like with this song that's just been played? Um, I think you'll love it. I think you will. Like, I'm not, I can't speak for all of you, of course, that'd be ridiculous, but I think a few of you might love it if you haven't heard it already. But um, that was like my favourite album last year. Like, obviously, it came out in 1995, but like, it's all I listened to last year um, when I wasn't doing reactions uh, and among the things I have reacted to. But anyway, yeah, that's such a cool song. Um, and the froggy one was so good. Get the froggy. It's okay, you know, he's just working out some things. You know, he might go around eating flies and so on. But that's just what frogs do. He doesn't know how to think like a human, you know? But anyway, I'm going to move on. Next one is called Doritos. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. The next one's called Doritos and Fritos. I like that. Very atonal. Oh, that's really pleasant. Ooh. Oh, my God, I love it. Very, um. Sorry, I'll go back, I'll go back, but I have to think of this. It, that reminded me of um, the B-52s, that's it. You know, like Love Shack and um, uh, uh, Lobster, it's a, it's Lobster, Rock Lobster. <laughs> right, okay. I love how it sounds spooky in the back. The oh. This bit is so pleasant. It's got a very tropical feeling. They mash so many cool genres together. Now that's got like a metal thing with a pinch harmonic in there. Oh, it's so low. <laughs> that's so fun what the heck okay so actually this was a single that actually came out which is cool what the artist has said about the song is it's about chips on tv and weird dreams i hope you enjoy <laughs> very cool i love that it's like nothing too serious it's just about chips on tv and weird dreams the end that, that's it i hope you enjoy it have fun <laughs> That's cool. I like it like that though. And like with these songs, sometimes I don't, I try not to dig too deep into all the lyrics because I just enjoy it for the sound and so on and like for the fun of it too. But so yeah, that, with that being said, I'm going to move on to Billy Knows Jamie. Hmm. Oh, got a bit of a new metal feeling here. Very. And using that kind of like, ooh. Jimmy up the juice. Jimmy kind of scary when he's looking at you. Ooh, nice little bend of the string there. Billy knows Jamie. Jamie looks pissed. Jimmy smokes rocks until he gets sick. Jimmy swim. Jimmy doesn't sing. He lets the sneakers go boom. Every place shot has it up in a mop. Jimmy's gonna turn to a bucket of sweat. Throw it in the trash. The siren too? This is so new metal, it's hilarious actually. <laughs> I love it, the storytelling of it. <laughs> Jamie's <laughs> That one was 
just like an absolute like what? <laughs> There's some storyline going on there. And it was like a new metal feeling and then into this just crazy like, I love how those distorted things that you probably, you feel like you should describe it as like a metal kind of breakdown. Yet really all it sounded like was pure distortion. It was actually indistinguishable if it was even a guitar that was being played, to be honest. Um, it was almost like a mockery of it. it. It felt like a joke. I don't know why, but not in like a cruel way. And maybe a parody, something, you know, in a lighthearted way of doing it. Oh my God. It literally says here, Billy Knows Jamie is a new metal... P what the hell is that word? I need to search that one. I can't, I'm not even going to try and say it. Um, okay, like a hymn, anthem, uh, shout of praise. Okay, and the word is... Pian. Pian, okay. Yeah, okay, so it's a new metal pian right down to the record scratches. Yeah, exactly. It, it, that's exactly what I was trying to say. Like, um, well, I wasn't trying to say pian. I've never heard that word. But you know what I mean? Like a parody in like a cool way. It felt like a homage or like a, yeah, like a love for it. It didn't feel bad, but it did still feel funny at the same time. I love that because I love new metal. So cool, so cool. Really fun. Um, okay, anyway, next one is called One Million Dollars. One million dollars. Oh my god, this is the chaos of a hundred gags in a nutshell. Oh, it's so addictive! <laughs> that's so fun! Like, that's like one of their ones where it's just crazy. Like, it's just insane. There's not really much else to say about it. It's just like, all right, all right. And also, I love how it's like, one million dollars! Like, uh, you could win one million dollars and then there was one of the, the vocal in there that was like the um old kind of like uh computer generated voices one million dollars it sounds a bit like uh you know the computer generated voice on um uh okay computer uh radiohead um i can't remember what the song was called uh it was called oh, we're not doing that again you'll know the one it's literally called something like no, right, we're not doing it. But anyway, yeah, I loved it. It was completely ridiculous, but so hard again. And also you can't, you can't like just bounce like this because you have to be cautious of when it will break. You'll be like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, you kind of have to be very thoughtful when you're listening to this type of music. And it's great for if you do have something like ADHD or whatever, because like there's so much to like catch your attention. And so for me, mwah, Perfection. But yeah, let's do it. <sighs> it's, it's got me so hyped. All right, okay. The most wanted person in the United States is the next song. On the news, and it said that I was the number one most wanted person in the United States. Boy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Are they sampling? Are they sampling Cypress Hill there? Or is it just sound sounding like it? That's cool. The United States. Me too. I love these lyrics. They're so fun. <laughs> oh, that feels nineties. I love that kind of like monotone way of delivering. It's very 90s, this. Hmm. From in a river. 
I love the lyrics, they're so funny! 10,000! 10,000 gets! Sample, Shannon Elizabeth. The number one most wanted person in the United States. Oh my god, so cool. That one was actually way more low key, but still obviously absolutely bizarre. But definitely low key in like the sense that it was actually had like a groove throughout that just kind of made sense actually. Um, Most Wanted Person in the United States contains dialogue performed by Shannon Elizabeth from the film Scary Movie, courtesy of Paramount Pictures. It also contains samples of Insane in the Membrane. Yeah, which is Cypress Hill, of course. I was wondering, I was like, is it a sample or are they just kind of made it sound like that in spaces? I love how much they like ben bent it and like broke it or whatever you want to call it, you know, and you know, did it in their own way though. The thing that makes you know that it's a sample is a and a bit of the bassy sound, I suppose, but they really did their own thing with it. Um, oh, so cool. It's just so cool. And someone commented, literally a goofy type beat, love it. And so true it is, it's got like a goofy like, you know, and the, and the way he's even saying like, I was on the TV or whatever he was saying, like, you know, he's all like, oh, oh shit. That's me over there on the TV. Wanted. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's got all that kind of feeling to it, which is so fun. Oh my god. And again, another like space for me to just tell you to go and listen to the presidents of the United States of America as well, because I just feel like if you like this sound, you might like that. Um obviously it's not like electronic in any way, but it has like a nineties like goofy silliness wackiness to it like this I guess um it's just fun also you might see me looking at my finger because I get crazy eczema on my like hands not just my hands but I get it like really randomly it's due to stress but it looks like little bubbles and like my skin's like flaking off it's horrible I don't know why I had to tell you that you probably didn't really want to know right let me know in the comments if you wanted to know that what am I doing? All right, anyway, next song. <laughs> next song is called, I Got My Tooth Removed. I wonder how that went. Is it gonna be a song that kind of replicates the, you know, the wackiness of when you get your tooth removed? Oh, you know, some people act a little bit loopy, or is it just gonna be their way of telling the story of it that is just ridiculous? Let's go. Little uh, scar two tone sound. And I don't want to talk about it. This dumb bitch will learn some tricks. I fuck with fire, burn my dick, play violin on sinking ships. I grab the pliers and just rip it on myself. But if it's gonna fix itself, I guess that day is okay. Don't know what to do. I gotta get rid of the shit. I don't know what to do. I gotta get rid of the shit. Ooh, I like that. Ba -ba -ba -ba. It's so happy though. My cheeks hold a twice its size and I started attracting flies. I'm playing operation with a safety pin and oh. start to cry. I get down on root canals cause that shit didn't work. And the villain's always falling out and blood gets on my shirt. It don't do it did another day. I guess that day just never came. Yeah. Ooh. This kind of 50s so hard to let you go. moment, you know? Ever again. Oh my god, so funny. Yeah, it was like a kind of song that was like what I kind of thought it would be. Sorry, everything's gone crazy up on my eyebrows situation. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, which is just like the story of it being like, ow, my tooth is hurting, it's get it's annoying, I wanna pull it out. And like literally leaving it so long and being like, I'll do it another day to the point where it just ends up falling out if sort of thing or, or like you actually had to go get it done you know what I mean it's just like a silly story once again with no real like moral to it I guess nothing like you know apart from maybe go get it checked out 
before like anything terrible happens but it's just funny i don't know but anyway it was fun another little two-tone kind of feeling there which is like a basically reggae ska music mixed with punk music and blended together to give it that like real fast upbeat fun feeling so yeah very cool okay and originally founded i i think by the specials and i saw the specials last year and sadly a few months later the lead singer of the specials passed away so i was very lucky to be able to see them um before that happened but also not so lucky that that happened to him but yeah anyway it's a last song and it's called me 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 sounds like a little flute in the background as well oh it's a synth Again with that syncopated beat. Do I sound like a joke when I'm talking to? Oh, I like that the vocal layers. Our song. Anything about me, anything about me. Damn, okay. That was actually a really cool ending song. Like, it, it's interesting. I want to like dive into it a little bit. I also want to get whatever hair is in my eye out my eye because I can feel it squirming around in there. That sounds gross, but that's because it is gross. It didn't feel all that nice. I don't know where it is, but anyway. They both sound so cool, and Laura sounds amazing. Like, the way she did, like, the um, uh, double little vocals and little parts in moments, that made it sound so fun, like a group vocal feeling, like there's loads of, like, girls behind her as well, all saying the same thing. I don't know. It, uh, I know it's just her, but it, it, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, um, it says... <laughs> <laughs> back once again and you'll never really know anything about me no you'll never really know anything about me um and then when we were together i tried to tell you i used to tap dance and i was in choir and i broke my arm and my dad crashed the go-kart he didn't mean to my mum didn't buy it oh that's interesting my mum like he didn't mean to crash the go-kart but my mum didn't buy it almost like saying like, oh, my mum felt like he did do it on purpose. Maybe he's actually saying there that he hasn't got a great relationship with his dad. Um, but he didn't know that as a child. But his dad secretly didn't like like him. I don't know. I don't know. I might be looking too deep into it. Where are you? Reveal yourself. Oh, I see you. It's not a hair. It's a bit of mascara or something i tried on your lipstick i thought it looked pretty but you didn't care no because you were always busy oh that's actually quite sad i'm gonna click that when in a relationship with someone you might feel like you want to share little parts of your life with them both significant and insignificant memories and stories about your past or new experiences in the present the person dylan's talking to though is ignoring it all and not paying any attention so they never get to learn more about each other or form a deeper connection yeah yeah that, that's definitely what it's about but like you know i tried on your lipstick i thought i looked pretty but you didn't care because you were always busy and you know oh i don't know it's just sad isn't it like oh not you know with things like that as well trying to look good for someone that always cuts a little deeper too doesn't it when you're trying to impress someone and they just don't say anything also my chair has broken not broken but it's been like this for a while but I, it doesn't bend back anymore and i'm very sad about that i, I don't know why i'm telling you all these random things today okay sorry i don't even know why i was like literally not even like in a great mood before all this like i actually was having quite a hard time and then and then i you know 100 gex happens to me and i'm i'm literally flipping around like a stoat <laughs> anyway do i sound like a joke when i'm talking to you i take it back quick and i nod like true because you say so many things and i don't know what i mean Short messages to you, short messages to me. Now if I think of a joke when I say goodbye, I put my palms on my face and pretend to cry. 
but I'll laugh to you effing hard. You probably think I'm so mean, but I don't even know you and now you'll never really know me. This one's a little bit more cryptic, but it sounded so good. Um, do I sound like a joke when I'm talking to you? Like, you know, like, do I, when I'm talking to you just in general, like seriously talking to you, do I just sound like a joke? Um, you know, I take it back quick and I nod like true, like, you know, nod like true, like mm, true. You know, like what? What's that kind of implying? I, I'm gonna click it actually before before I go and try and you know, yeah, whatever. Oh, this is actually this is actually more interesting and something that I might not have clocked on to um, being a cis woman. But actually, I'm really glad I clicked it. Really glad because it says here, trans feminine people like less often struggle with voice dysphoria. Testosterone produced during puberty changes the shape and length of the vocal cords deepening the voice, but estrogen taken during transition does little to affect or reverse this change. Some trans feminine people undergo voice training to try and make their voice sound more traditionally feminine, often out of both personal discomfort and fear of social rejection or mockery if their voice is not passing. That, that's honestly got to be so hard, like, because you can go ahead and change so much about you so you can look like completely feminine but then the voice which would be the hardest thing to change um especially if you do have like you know deep dysphoria around you know that and you really want to present as a woman or man whatever but let's just go with women here and then you've still got like a more of a masculine voice that must be so hard like if someone says hello to you it must feel like hard to be like hi back because it you might be in fear of that. I don't know. That, that that's actually well, oh, there's already a million things that are hard about being transgender anyway. Yeah, I can I could see how that one could be really hard. But I do understand that quite because I love um watching Luxaria. I love her so much. But she um she was gonna either get the female uh feminization surgery, facial facial feminization surgery, or she was gonna get like a voice um, you know, coaching her voice, I can't remember, but she actually, I think she actually became, came to be okay with her voice in the end. I think she was actually like, you know what, I don't feel so bad about my voice now. And I, it made me feel so happy. And like, I don't know, that just made me, filled me with joy. But of course I understand like the dysphoria around all of that. And like how being trans is like, a really, is a lifelong experience. It's not just like, you transition now you're a woman or now you're a man no you're you're con and especially in the world we live in with just how much like discrimination there is and even just like government stuff like and laws and oh i could go deep into it i'm not going to because i've had a really good video but it's still important to talk about all i could do is sympathize i can't even empathize because i I, I can't imagine what that feels like. I can't, well, I can imagine it, but it just wouldn't even be the same. So all I could do is sympathize uh, in the most like non-pitying way. It's not like that, but you know what I'm trying to say. I, I, I fucking, to put it lightly, I could not fucking imagine how that feels. And that and is enough said, like to be, have to go through that dysphoria is horrible, especially like, like I was saying with the voice thing, it must be quite, a, give you a bit of a fear sometimes to talk to people in public. Anyway, sorry, getting thoughtful there. <laughs> fear of rejection also plays a role in many queer people's early social circles. It's common for people to test out the waters with a joke about sexuality or gender, but backpedal and hide their identity if their friend group rejects or mocks the concept. Yeah, okay, interesting. Hmm. I don't like that. Not great friends. <laughs> Les has actually stated repeatedly in the past that she uses 100 Gex characteristic autotune distorted vocals as a way to alleviate her voice dysphoria. However, they're noticeably lacking from this song about hiding one's true internal identity. Oh, okay. So, however, they're noticeably lacking from the song about hiding one's true internal identity. This aesthetic choice could be a rejection of the same fear that causes many transgender people to conceal their identity from their social circles. For the fear of looking stupid, of saying something the wrong way, or 
of bigotry and hatred. Although it's a rational fear that can keep a person safe, it also means that a person's friends and family might never truly know that person as the gender that they identify as, and therefore as their truest self. Well, yeah, of course. Damn, just like the process of going through that is just, like, it's just like, imagine having just all your all your everyday, like, and some of you don't have to imagine, some of you know exactly what this is like, but let's just say, um, for us like cis people, right? Just imagine going through your life with all the experiences, is, experiences that you've had in your childhood, but then imagine being trans as well and struggling with that dysphoria and wanting to be, um, you know, the, the opposite gender and struggling with that too. It, it's just, I don't know, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I really commend the people for being you know, I really commend the trans community for just fighting to be themselves and we've got to also help and fight with them for sure. Like, yeah. Anyway, like I said, I don't want to get too deep, but it just, it does, it, you know, it means something, doesn't it? Well, it means more than something, but yeah. <laughs> anyway really lovely song like I really like that as an end song call really cool it's actually left me thoughtful but, <laughs> but anyway yeah the whole album was insane I don't even know which was my favorite Hollywood Baby is still just so good but then all the rest are still kind of they're kind of on par for me one million dollars I know it was a short random thing but I loved that Billy Knows Jamie was so cool because it had that new metal thing Doritos and Fritos was good it really felt like a fully like fully fledged song um, Frog on the Floor made me laugh so much. Oh my God, you have to go listen to the presence of the United States of America. Please let me know if you have. You can either comment on this video or, you know, tell me in a DM. I, I need to know what you think. But anyway, I um, hope you enjoyed. And if you did enjoy, please do consider liking, commenting, subscribing and all those lovely things. And I shall see you next time with another video. Bye.